Operating an electronics store is a very difficult business to run. Not only do you have to face the challenges that come with running any type of retail operation, but you also must keep up with the rapid changes in technology and the ever-changing consumer preferences. That being said, it's no surprise that there have been plenty of electronic retailers that have come and gone. In this video, we will have a look back at some of the more prominent electronic stores that are no longer around. Good Guys was an American electronics chain that began in San Francisco in 1973. At their peak, they had 71 stores in California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. In 2003, CompUSA purchased the company and by 2006, all remaining stores had closed. Good Guys is also well known for a 1991 hostage situation in Sacramento, California. The Incredible Universe was a big box chain that was established by the Tandy Corporation, which was a leather goods company. They initially opened two stores in 1992 one in Arlington, Texas, and one in Wilsonville, Oregon. When these two stores became profitable, they quickly opened an additional 15 stores. However, competition from other successful electronic store chains proved to be too much, and Incredible Universe closed down for good in 1997 after five short years in operation. Fredder was an electronics and appliance retailer that was based in Detroit and founded in the 1950s by Ollie Fredder. He became famous for his promise that he gave in commercials on television. I'll give you five pounds of coffee if I can't beat your best deal. The competition knows me. You should too. Occasionally, he had to make good on this crazy offer, which got even crazier. Fredder gave away one pound cans of coffee that had been relabeled as net weight five pounds. The company faced increasing competition during the 1990s and it went out of business in 1996. Highland Superstores was founded in 1933 in Highland Park, Michigan. By the end of the 1970s, the chain had 18 stores throughout the Midwest. When the chain went public in 1985, they were the second largest American electronics retailer behind Circuit City. But by the end of the 80s, the company began to experience financial troubles. Highland Superstores filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1992 and liquidated their remaining stores in 1993. Tweeter was a major force in the world of electronic retailers. It was launched in Boston in 1972 and quickly expanded in the New England area. The company would eventually rise to more than 100 stores in 18 states under the names of Tweeter, Hi-Fi Buys, Showcase Home Entertainment, and Sound Advice. In 2007, they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and closed 49 stores. They tried to restructure, but they were forced to close in 2008. Crazy Eddie was a consumer electronics store chain that began in Brooklyn, New York in 1971. During the 1970s, they took the tri-state area by storm thanks to some of their memorable commercials. The TV spots starred DJ Jerry Carroll who enticed customers by pretending to be crazy. At their peak, they had more than 43 stores in four states. But the company folded in 1989 thanks to the founders being involved in some fraudulent business practices. The Wiz became known for its popular slogan, Nobody Beats the Wiz. It was founded by four Jamal brothers in New York City in 1977. During the 1990s, they saw some big success. But in 1998, after expanding from roughly 20 stores to over 80 in less than a year, the chain filed for bankruptcy. They were purchased by Cablevision, who then took them to 94 stores. However, even with their help, it wasn't possible to keep the whiz flowing and the brand was shut down. The Ultimate Electronics store started in 1968 and originally they had operated under various names. Ultimate Electronics began a large expansion campaign in 2000, and by 2004, the company had doubled its store count to 64. They filed for bankruptcy in 2005, which seemingly saved them. 
However, they were forced to file for bankruptcy once again in 2011 and they liquidated all their stores and assets. Lafayette Radio Electronics was founded in 1931 and was based out of New York. The business started out as a mail order delivery operation and later began opening brick and mortar stores all across the U.S. Lafayette shuttered in 1981. Sun Television and Appliances was founded by brothers Macy and Herbie Block in 1949. They opened stores throughout the Midwest and also in rural areas where there was no other competition. In 1996, the company was set to be purchased by H.H. Gregg Appliances and Electronics, but they backed out of the deal. Two years later, Sun filed for bankruptcy and had to liquidate. Steinberg's Electronics Store was a family business that began in Ohio in 1921. By the 1990s, they had grown to 22 stores in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. However, in the same decade, they started facing stiffer competition, which forced them to file Chapter 11 bankruptcy, followed by all of the stores ceasing operations in 1997. Silo was founded in 1946 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania by Sidney Cooper. The company name came from the first two letters of his name and also the first two letters of his wife's name, Lorraine. During the 1970s, the company enjoyed rapid expansion. But in 1976, Mr. Cooper died and the company then went through several ownership changes. In 1993, Fredder purchased the chain and all remaining stores were then closed by 1996. Circuit City was one of the U.S.'s most successful electronics retailers. They started out as the Wards Company in 1949. In 1984, the name was changed to Circuit City and they started popping up all over the U.S. In 2008, Circuit City filed for bankruptcy and was forced to liquidate and close all stores by 2009. Systemax purchased the brand name later that year and they tried to reopen it as an online retailer only, but the Circuit City brand idea was dropped in 2012. Since that time, there have been a couple attempts at reviving the brand name, but nothing has really materialized. JNR was an electronics and music retailer that was launched in 1971. Their headquarters was located on Park Row across from the New York City Hall. When 9-11 happened, millions of product was destroyed and it also meant less foot traffic in the area. Hurricane Sandy was another tragedy for the company. They lost power and they were already facing the decline of CDs and LPs which became their main source of business. Sadly, JNR ceased operations in 2014. Shack Electronics began as a small radio and television repair shop in South Minneapolis in 1957 by Leander Shack. His son Richard soon took over the company when Leander died unexpectedly in 1960. Richard, or Dick as he was known, expanded the business to 10 stores by 1971. The company's growth had continued and by 1984 they had 60 stores. However, in 1985, things took a turn and the company filed for bankruptcy and started liquidating all assets. On Valentine's Day 1986, Shack Electronics closed the remaining 21 stores and let 250 employees go. Their entire inventory was purchased by Sound of Music, the precursor to Best Buy. Radio Shack dates back to 1921 with a ham radio shop in Boston. Throughout the years, it evolved into a go-to spot for loudspeakers, mobile phones, satellite TVs, batteries, and electronic toys. It was also the first retailer to sell a mass-marketed, fully assembled PC. But with the rise of Best Buy and Amazon, Radio Shack was soon left behind. The company filed for bankruptcy in 2015 and it was acquired by Sprint. They had to file for bankruptcy again in 2017. Following its second bankruptcy, Radio Shack tried to partner with Hobby Lobby to bring Radio Shack Express inside of their locations, but the venture failed. 
Olson Electronics was a nationwide electronic store chain that was founded in 1927 by brothers Sidney, Philip, and Irving Olson in Akron, Ohio. At one time, they had more locations than Radio Shack. They sold to Teledyne in 1968 and were rebranded to Teledyne Olson Electronics. They later sold to three Chicago investors in August of 1984 and they filed for bankruptcy in 1985. Fry's Electronics was an American big box store chain that was headquartered in San Jose, California. In 1972, Charles Fry sold the Fry supermarket chain for $14 million and gave each of his three sons $1 million each. In 1985, they pulled together to launch Fry's Electronics. They used the model of the grocery retailing to sell computers and electronics. They never were as big as Best Buy, but they sure had their corner in the market. Each store had its own theme, which was unlike any other electronics store around. In August of 2014, they operated 34 brick-and-mortar stores in 9 U.S. states, 17 in California, 8 in Texas, 2 in Arizona, 2 in Georgia, and 1 each in the state of Illinois, Indiana, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. In 2019, they were working on restructuring their stores, but when 2020 hit, it took a toll on them. By April of 2021, they began to liquidate all the remaining assets, including the real estate. Many of these electronic stores are places where we got introduced to some life-changing products. We made memories there, and some of them are still talked about today. Sadly, time has moved on and left these stores in the past. What were some of the electronic stores that you love to shop at? I'd love to know more in the comments below. Thanks for watching.